being compared to. Um, well, were, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, I mean, no doubt. I mean, it's great to recognize that there are great people that have come before you, but it doesn't mean that you can't be great too. And so, uh, what you're doing builds on their work, and we can appreciate all of it, Marco. Well, the biggest problem is, is they took their work to the grave with them, and I feel that I'm easily following in their footsteps. Um, I'm trying to preserve my d- discovery. Um, that's why I'm talking with you tonight. It exposes me to some risk. I've never had any big threat, but I, I figure I'm certainly um, rocking the ship. My goal is, and I would be glad to come to Missouri if anybody had a, a huge facility that I could use for me and my staff. Right now I'm working out of my home, and I have my computer. I have state-of-the-art Dell computers, fortunately, with dual NVIDIA graphics cards, dual processors. But my, um, my Macromedia uh um, director and Dreamweaver expert just quit because I couldn't afford to pay him. And we've been really cramped for space. He was working in my living room. So I, I've been trying to find a facility. I found one in Texas. It's about a quarter of a million dollars, but it's a huge 25,000 square foot facility, and I'm trying to find the money to buy it. Anyway, the applications of my work, the first work is on DNA. Uh, this work shows the secret of cellular communication. And With one... it, I believe you can end any disease, produce unlimited food, uh, the next application, let's hey, Marco, go to energy. Marco, and, and, and some of that work goes back, again, nearly 20 years. What about Jonas Salk? You told me to ask you about Jonas Salk, who I was a huge fan of. Um, Jonas Salk um, commented on my work, the, the paper I wrote, Quantum Mechanical State of DNA Sequencing, and said that it was so advanced he didn't think it would be understood in my lifetime unless I cloned myself. <laughs> Um, There's another stunning endorsement from uh, from no, none other than Jonas Salk. Amazing. So, all right. So further on with applications. Okay. Um, fusion mirror symmetry coils uh, for hot fusion. They try and create a magnetic bottle. Um, the thing is, is he who controls magnetism controls the universe. Hmm. I know the secret of magnetism. I know how it works. It's going to seem like I'm on a tangent, but I want to do right as best I can for you and, and the people who are listening. So well, first of all, we know that electricity and gravity and magnetism are all somehow related to one another. So does, so does the mag, magnetism thing wrap back into your code? I'm able the, the numbers 396-693, um, the numbers 3 and 6 mm-hmm. actually determine pinpoint the location of where the magnetic moment is at any given instant. I'm actually able to to determine and tap into the magnetism, more magnetism than anybody's ever created. As born as as even John Louise Nodden on JLN Labs uses my coil as the because I get so magnetic out much magnetic flux, uh, field output. He refers to my coil as the proof. Of, again, this is a, a strong, most people won't know what I'm referring to, but it's the proof of the B field torsion effect, effect of axiom fields. Um, I, I know the secret of how to harness magnetism for space flight. Right. I obsolete the combustion engine. Okay? I create the ultimate perfect nozzle using a toroidal engine. And I can navigate it using these underpinning nested vortices because I understand their phasing. So I can use it to control it, to steer it. Should I go on? Yeah, let's talk about this propulsion idea for a second because, and clarify a little bit for me the, the idea of the, of, of the nozzle and how you would be able to control the direction. I understand it's probably by, by somehow controlling the vortices and which ones are active. Nested vortices. Um, you have a letter there. From Dennis Watts from NASA. Uh, he is the, I'm not sure if he still is, he was in charge of communications for the International Space Station. Mm-hmm. And he said that um, my discovery can turn mankind into intergalactic citizens. I know the secret of how to create a vertical lift flying vehicle that has no pitch or yaw, it cannot crash, does not require wings. Um, essentially, the toroid-based, um, if you look at any bar magnet, you always have two poles and you have the magnetic field compressing and decompressing 
at each pole. Um, it's always based on a two-stage surge pump of, of, of compression, decompression, implosion, explosion, black hole to white hole. Mm-hmm. Um, everything's a nozzle. The ultimate nozzle in space at the center of the, our Milky Way is a black hole. Um, pretty much uh, modern science um, nowadays, I'm, I'm certain, they're not as ignorant as they were a few decades ago, recognizes that every black hole feeds at the other end a white hole. Um, every quasar, let's use an equator an example as a white hole. Quasars are known to go billions of light years through the solar system, correct? Mm-hmm. Shooting hot, gaseous, um, nebular uh, streams, billions of light years. Every quasar is fed on the other side. I mean, where does it come from? Mm. Where is this billions of light years of gaseous matter shooting out in a plume across space coming from? It's fed by a black hole on the other end. Okay? A black hole is a nozzle. Okay? Nothing ever reached. Whoever thinks a black hole is solid, a, a true dynamic black hole like in the center of our Milky Way is solid, is wrong. Nothing ever reaches the center of a black hole. All matter is deflected from the center. Hmm. Everything must have a hole in the center. That's where the missing zero is. The zero is always the nozzle in the center. Okay? And, and everything goes around the hole in the hmm. center. It hmm. goes around the lip, just like a camera shutter. Mm-hmm. An aperture. Yeah. It's an aperture. Hmm. That's referred to, again, as the inner diameter ID short for inner di- di- di-